Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, I'm back on the road again. Guess what I'm riding? <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, it's the Magicycle Deer. I've been giving the deer a little bit more love lately. Yeah, I haven't ridden this bike in so many... A couple months, a month and something, right? So I figured I'd take it out more often now. So what's new? Let me, let me tell you guys what's been new. Well, first off, let me tell you the weather. The weather today is actually really nice. It's nice and cool. I, I, I think it might be like 70 degrees. Yeah, maybe 67, 68. It's a little bit colder than perfect, but it's not bad. Where are we going to go? Well, let's take a left. Yeah, we always go down these areas. <laughs> not going to go too far again today. <laughs> but I decided to take it out. Now, I had a video all ready for Saturday. It's actually a review of one of the new bikes. Then I realized... <laughs> I realized that uh, I can't really release that that fast. I have to add a couple things to the edits and stuff. So I said, well, let's just make a new one for Saturday. How's that? And then we can hopefully release the, uh, the review maybe Tuesday or something of next week. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, at least one of them is done. And there's uh, two more bikes I still need to do it for. And then another bike will eventually will come in. So, yeah, slowly catching up. <laughs> so, um, so that one's done. Um, let's stop here for a second here. Okay. So today, if you take a look at the sky, it's a little overcast, but overcast is okay. <laughs> at least it's not hard, heavy sun beating down on you. I think that's worse. I'd rather be a little bit cooler and colder than uh, be sweating. Uh, let me let me turn on my ex needle helmet. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I just take off and uh, don't do it. But then uh, then I'll remember and then I'll push the button behind me and that'll turn on the light. I have my rear tail light blinking. I have the front light here blinking as you can see. These things really do help uh, for visibility. I think people, oh, this guy's gonna let me go. Thank you very much. Um, the visibility is really good when, when you have something blinking. I know some people don't like it. They think it's obnoxious to have it blinking at people, but uh, at this point, I'd rather make sure they see me. Yeah. Rear tail light, yeah, it's not as bright as this blinking, but it is there blinking. It's not part of the deer. I have a separate tail light that I put on. The front headlight was actually provided by Magicycle, so this is the one that they sell. But the tail light is one that I picked up somewhere else. Can't remember which uh, website it was that I picked it up at. It was part of a buy a front light plus get a uh, tail light type of deal. So yeah, I, I again decided that I'm not going to go too far today. I'm just going to kind of hang around the same general areas we always do. And um, I was heading out and I almost forgot my water bottle. I had to go back and get the water bottle. That's actually one of the more important things to have. Uh, I mean, if I'm talking and riding and I get too thirsty, and you don't have any water to drink, it just makes for a miserable ride. So if you don't have a water bottle with you on your bike, put one on. It makes a big difference. You should be hydrating anyways as you go. I, you know, as you know, I don't, I don't pedal all the time while I'm on camera here. If I pedal at all, it's gonna be at, uh, on the way coming back, usually after I've uh, shut down the, the video already. Thank you. I usually do say thank you after people make the effort and move over. Some people don't move over at all. You can hit them with the bell three times and they won't move because they don't hear you. They've got headphones on and, or earphones on and they don't hear anything. Some of them don't have it on, they still don't move. <laughs> 
they just leave themselves right where they are and hope that you can get past them. So everyone's a little different. No, use your bell if you remember to do it. I don't, I don't always remember, sometimes I don't. And there's times when I kind of know that these guys aren't gonna hear me if I hit it. So then I'll go past those people. But yeah, you, you should probably hit the bell every time you see somebody. So how's the deer doing? Well, deer's doing pretty good. As far as the um, suspension in the back, yeah, it works. Yeah, it definitely works. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I get on the bike and I'll just hop on and up and down just to make sure that that thing is actually moving, and yeah, it does. So, caution, nest ahead, red-winged blackbirds may be aggressive. Well, yeah, everyone's warning about these red-winged blackbirds. All right, so now we got this dog and this other lady and the other guy. Now this is going to be tough because they're kind of close together, so I can't really pass her because the other guy's there. So, oh, he's moving to the side. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, yeah, those birds will dive bomb you. I remember one time when we were growing up, uh, we had a above ground swimming pool in our backyard. It wasn't huge. It was like 30 feet by 15 feet oval. It only went down like four feet. And it's an above ground, so it's, you know, it's not gonna be really deep or anything. It's just something to kind of move around in, right? <laughs> but we had that in our backyard, and I recall right on our roof, there was a, I don't know if it was red-winged blackbird, but it was a bird that kept dive-bombing at us while we were in the pool. And so we said, okay, we got to do something about this bird. <laughs> because it, it, you know, you couldn't use the swimming pool without it coming after you. So, what would you do? Let me ask you that. What would you do? Now, back in the day, <laughs> regulations aren't like they are today, where you, you cannot, uh, cannot kill a bird or something like that. I don't know what the current regulations are, but my dad had had enough of it. So he had borrowed a pellet gun, pellet pistol from my uncle. And um, it was the first time we had ever seen a pellet gun. So uh, the bird was up on the top of our roof on the, uh, on the chimney. And so uh, my dad took aim and, yep, one shot, <laughs> that bird was a goner. Okay, so now you got this bird that's basically gone. It's, it's like on your roof. So what do you got to do with that? <laughs> so my dad says, go up and get it. <laughs> I wasn't going to go up and get it. <laughs> I don't like heights. We forced my brother to go up and get it. <laughs> Made him climb that ladder and go and get it. <laughs> See the things you do for the older brothers, you just tell them, hey, you, you go get it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go get it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether you can do that these days. <laughs> We're talking, um, oh, I would say mid 1970s. <laughs> There's got to be some type of regulation by now, I'm, I'm sure. Can't go shooting birds. <laughs> well, maybe in certain parts of uh, certain parts of the country that might be okay. But uh, where we lived in uh, in the Chicago land area, I don't think that was okay. <laughs> I don't think my dad cared. I think he says we're getting that bird <laughs> no matter what. Got to get rid of that thing. Yeah, that swimming pool is the one where I actually got stung by a wasp. You know, you have to have a fence if you have a swimming pool. You can't just have a swimming pool in your backyard. You've got to fence it off so kids can't actually go in there and drown or something. So I had to kind of get between the swimming pool and the fence to get by, the, to get to the filters and stuff, and didn't realize there was a wasp nest that was built up underneath one of the poles um, that hold up the, the swimming pool. So as I'm going across, of course, I get stung right in the stomach. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, a wasp sting is really bad. 
All right, so enough of these stories. What about the bikes? <laughs> What's new on the bikes? Well, I, I've just been enjoying the uh, the new bikes that have come in. You know, I as I typically will do, I'll ride the bikes around a little bit first before I actually do the review. I mean, what's the point of a review if you never even rode the bike, right? It doesn't have to be a lot of riding. I can pretty much tell after a certain amount of riding whether the bike is going to be a good one or not. I mean, we've we've done enough bikes to kind of know at this point, right? That 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 is the one benefit for. Um, for having multiple bikes and uh, getting the opportunity to kind of test different ones out. You can kind of tell right away. You can tell if the, no if the motor is noisy, you can tell if the suspension is really working. <laughs> you can tell whether the uh, pedal assist is a smooth pedal assist or whether it kind of jerks you or, you know, there there's a lot of little things you can kind of tell right away. So, um, Hi. <laughs> I think I always run into her. <laughs> so uh, we um, get a chance to try it out first. I form my little opinions. And then I take the bike out and do the review. Yeah, I think, I think within five or six miles, I can pretty much tell whether I'm going to like that bike or I don't. I mean, the initial impressions are important, right? If your initial impression is like, wow, this thing is terrible or whatever, um, you can kind of know it right away. I hear things bouncing around in the back. I'm going to stop for a second here. Yeah, brakes are still squeaking. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think what it is, I know you can't see. I think what it is, it's my water bottle. <laughs> the, the water bottle cage is kind of rattling against the rear rack. I think uh, next time I bring it back inside, I'm going to have to hit it up with a couple of more extra um, zip ties that will lock it in place better so it doesn't vibrate as much when you hit a bump. I mean, it's still holding the water bottle, but you know, nobody wants to hear the little rattling going on. I don't know if you could hear that or not. Can you hear that? Yeah, that's, that's the water bottle cage hitting the rear rack. Yeah, a couple extra zip ties will come in handy. Zip ties are your friend, really. All right, I know this guy is there. Well, he's got cars. He can't. He can't cross. So we will pass and get out of his way. Yeah, zip ties really make a difference. There's a lot of a lot of uses for zip ties. <laughs> So anyway, um, under review process, yeah, I try, I try to check them all out first, come up with my impression of it, then I kind of figure out what am I going to say under review, what am I going to show. Okay, this thing is like getting lower and lower. I got a duck. <laughs> really had to duck underneath that uh, branch that was sticking out. A couple branches, actually. through here first. I, I usually don't want to talk too much when I pass in this area. For some reason there's a lot of gnats in this area. I don't want to be eating a gnat. <laughs> Gotta keep my mouth closed more. So we'll be a little more quiet over here. I think it's probably because it's a lot more wooded over here. Wooded? More woods, wooded, wooded area. Is that a proper way of saying it? <laughs> All right. I think we're past the area of the gnats. I know last year uh, when I was going through here towards the end of the 
end of the summer season, um, there was so many bugs coming out that uh, I, think, I think what they did is they sprayed it or something. And that just kind of got all the bugs to come out. And it was all over. I had to get off the path quickly because I just kind of felt like we were being bombarded by the, uh, by the bugs coming out and hitting you in the face and everything. And again, did not want to really talk because you don't want to be eating those things. Rip One Outdoors told me that he had uh, eaten his share of, fair share of uh, bugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, we don't like that. Actually, it's kind of interesting for those who follow music. Taylor Swift recently ate a bug during her concert. <laughs> she had an outdoor concert. I think it was here in the Chicago area. And uh, just recently, I'm saying, she's singing and she basically ate a bug. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I've been there. I've done that before. <laughs> I've eaten a bug while teaching photography. You're talking and then in it goes. <laughs> Kind of choked her up for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it happens. What are you gonna do? I mean, <laughs> she couldn't spit it out. Hopefully, she drank it down or something. I don't know if she did or she didn't, but yeah, not good. Oh, here's an interesting thing to tell you. It has nothing to do with bikes. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe today will be story day. Yeah, I'm playing keyboards at church this coming Sunday. Now you know I typically play guitar or I play bass more guitar than bass um, at church but this uh, Father's Day kind of lacking in keyboard players so our worship leader had me actually set up for bass for this week it was just gonna be bass acoustic guitar and drums it was gonna be that that minimal plus uh, the worship leader playing the guitar and then uh, we had another person who does singing he'll be singing so it was gonna be really just three instruments but I guess uh, our normal bass player was finally able to actually do it. So she asked me, since he's coming back to play bass, could I, could I cover on keyboards? <laughs> I kind of chuckle a little bit because I started out on piano when I uh, learned how to play instruments. I was, and uh, oh, hold on a second here. Make sure both sides stop for us. There we go. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I took piano for, I don't know, maybe a couple years when I was a little kid. You know, I don't know how old was I, eight, <laughs> nine maybe, something like that. Then I quit piano because my brother was so much better than me. I said, I'll never be able to be as good as him. So I quit, and then I took up guitar. And then my, I told my parents that, uh, you know, if, if they let me play guitar, I'll play it forever. And then, yeah, and to this day, I'm still playing it. But it doesn't mean I don't know how to play the piano. So, uh, yeah, things are hanging here. They gotta trim these trees back. So, um, I have played keyboards on the various recordings I made of my own. Because I've recorded several uh, CDs worth of music. And um, I, um, I haven't really played for anybody else live. I'm, you know, originally I thought 30 plus years. I'm gonna say it's probably more than like 40 plus years. I have not played live for anybody. But people know I can play because I, I, I put the keyboard stuff on my, my recordings. Hey, and for those of you guys who do wanna hear what I sound like playing, <laughs> again, it has nothing to do with e-bikes and you don't have to go there if you don't want, but i just let you know, if you go to the Russ is Right uh, main page, you're gonna see playlists. And in that playlist, you'll see things that say something like music related. Yeah, I've got several uh, music covers in there. So, um, yeah, it's not church stuff, okay? So if, you're, if you don't want to hear the church stuff, it's not on there, okay? What's on there is songs from like the 70s and 80s and stuff. You know, the songs when I was growing up on the radio, yeah. You get stuff like uh, More Than a Feeling from Boston, Peace of Mind from Boston. So you got some... Uh, what other, what other stuff? We've got some songs from America on there. You know, you guys probably know these songs, right? If you're a certain age. And, uh... Um... So, uh... <laughs> so if you want to hear what I sound like, just go there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm playing every instrument on those recordings. Okay, so if you go and listen, you'll see me playing and you'll, you'll get to hear some songs from the 70s and 80s from the radio. <laughs> yeah, they're just cover music. Go there and check it out. See, see if you like it. Or you can just say, yeah, this guy's terrible. <laughs> I know several of you guys have done it before. And um, people have said you're, you're pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Nobody's outright said you're terrible, so. <laughs> stop for a second here yeah squeak squeak I know I'm gonna check to see uh, make sure is there a way for I can no nope. I cannot tighten it down anymore with the existing existing zip ties let me show you guys I'm on the other wrong side let me move it to the side here let me show you how I do this So it's just zip tied on here, but I didn't tighten it. So every time I hit a bump, I hear this thing rattling and I can see water <laughs> drips all over here. Oh well, we're here, I might as well take a drink of water. Yeah, you can see it's kind of loose. Yeah, I've got to tighten it up. <laughs> yeah, the rattling just kind of bugs you every now and then. All right, so here's how I get on. I typically will tilt the deer and then swing my leg over the top as it's tilted down. I do the same thing getting off of it too, by the way. I usually will tilt a little bit and then uh, get off. I, I remember I went out with uh, Donut Jim once and I think I was getting off the bike. He thought I was falling off the bike because <laughs> I tilted so low. Because the lower I can tilt it, there's, there was like fire here. I think it was mentioned too that there was a fire. Um, I tilted so much that it, it looked like I was dropping the bike. <laughs> but no, I, I do that just to get off. Same thing happened too, I think, when I had that encounter with my former student who was on the e-trike. Remember that? I actually almost laid the bike down. I, 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 I angled it down so much just to swing my leg over. I don't have the same flexibility I used to have. I think when I first started getting my e-bikes, my flexibility still wasn't too bad. And that was right after, you know, the knee replacement and everything. But even now, a couple years later now, yeah, my flexibility is getting worse because I, I can't really exercise it the kind of way that I used to since the knee's all messed up and stuff. So I'm finding uh, I don't have the same flexibility. I mean, I, I used to be able to kick over your head, yeah. Used to be able to kick pretty high and not anymore. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, go go take a look at the uh, the playlist and uh, look for the music related stuff. You'll see a bunch of songs there. Um, yeah, some Boston songs, um, songs from America. I think there's one John Denver song in there. Um, what else did I do on there? One or two BG songs in there as well. And uh, I figured I might as well do some recording and uh, put some stuff down on on the digital format. Um, you know, one day you'll be dead and gone and nobody will remember what you sounded like. Well, now it's on YouTube. Yeah. My daughter will always be able to hear what I sounded like or, or uh, you know, show anybody else, you know, here's what my dad sounded like back then. So, yeah, it doesn't hurt to do stuff like that. You know, it, I mean... Uh, I don't really play that music anymore, um, but growing up, uh, we did play songs like that, yeah. Today I play mostly at church, but it's still fun to do it. Yeah, go give it a listen. Put a comment in there, over there. And, and if, you, if, you, uh, if you're a regular Russ is Right viewer and you go there, put a comment and just say, hey Russ, I'm a regular, regular subscriber, a regular viewer, so I know it's from you guys. Because sometimes you get random people who go and they'll find your song. If they're, if they're looking up a specific song and they want to see how well you did with it, you know, they'll, they'll get all these covers from people. So I don't know where they're coming from. But if you're a regular Russ is Right e-bike viewer, yeah, let me know that. Put a comment down the video so I know you, you uh, went and took a look. 
gave it a listen to. All right, we're back in this area again. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta go when we can go. So I think I gotta speed up a little here because I think the left turner guys will be done in a minute here. Then I should be able to cross over. But I always look always to make sure there's nobody taking a right turn or doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Run me over, you know? All right. And then we gotta hop around. <laughs> There's, there's not enough space here to make a clean turn with your bike. It's a very narrow uh, amount of space. And so you gotta have to hop the bike a little bit you know, after you push that button. <laughs> there we go. Now the deer, let's talk about the deer for a second here. The deer has a fairly high uh, top bar. Yeah, I don't really clear it. I can clear it if I kind of kind of step off to the side of it. If I was like directly up and down in front of it, uh, yeah, certain parts of the anatomy would be hitting that top bar we don't want to be hit. <laughs> so I have a 31 and a half inch inseam, 30, 30 and a half to 31 inch seam, something like that. So if you don't have at least, I would say at least a 32 inseam, yeah, you might not want the deer. Yeah. You might do better off uh, if, if, if you have a inseam that's lower to, to maybe try that deer mini. Yeah, because that is a step through design. It's got a 20 inch, uh, I've got a duck again here. <laughs> it's got a 20 inch wheel, but it, it's a full, oh, excuse me, <laughs> I'm burping things up. It's got a full suspension in there too. Let's take the long route. Let's see if they actually fixed it yet. We've been taking the uh, shortcut here. Oh, guys are out here working. They're raking things up. So let's see if they've uh, they fixed it. I was wondering how they were doing this. This used to be available for cars to come up down here. So they've kind of eliminated that now. Now it's strictly a bike thing. Yeah. Let's see how far we can go. You know, if it doesn't go all the way through, we can always come back and then take the shortcut. Shortcut's here on the right. We'll just keep going. Let's see where it takes us to. Yeah, it looks like they fixed it. Yeah. Comes up here, you see it's got a center pole so cars can't go through. Yeah, they're done. Yeah, nice. <laughs> well, this is this is typically um, the cars will go through here. So if you come down this part of the path, um, you should be aware cars could be in your way. Let me show you another area. We used to always do it as well. Um, I, I don't often do it anymore, but I'll show you another area in here. Should be coming up soon. Yeah, it's not this one. This is. Uh, there's a lot of uh, other areas through here that is kind of gravel. I don't usually go into gravel stuff, as you know. Although I've been encouraged by many people to try it, but I still haven't done it. So, let's see, yeah, we're gonna go up this hill here. I'm just throttling, I'm not pedaling at all. All right, they've got some, uh, some working guys that's still working stuff here. Uh, oh, he's clearing, he's clearing that area. Like uh, clearing the dirt or chomping up the dirt or something. I hate, I hate when that happens because this stuff goes into your eyeballs if you don't, uh, if you're not careful. Now, during the winter time, they usually block this whole section off. They don't even let you come up in here. 
but I'm gonna go take a left here and this is the area I usually don't go into much but there is another portion over here it just goes into like picnic area or something I mean it's no real big deal you go through it then you got to turn around and come back so I usually just skip it but I'll show it to you let you see it Yeah, I mean, if you had a regular bike and you're riding this, it might be kind of tough. You know, you're kind of going up and down. You know, there there are um, nice little hills to kind of go up and down in. But um, I've seen people with regular bikes that are kind of huffing and puffing trying to get up and down these things sometimes. Yeah, so we just went up one, now we go down one. See, when it's covered over like this, where the sun is really kind of obscured from all the foliage, it is definitely cold, because I can feel it. Now, I have my long sleeve uh, UV protection uh, shirt on, and of course I, I have my yellow um, safety vest on. Oh, I did buy another safety vest. Did I tell you guys that? The other one was looking really raggedy. <laughs> the yellow part was fine. It's the reflector. You know, they have kind of like uh, reflector stripes on the on the safety vest that was kind of falling apart and, you know you go and wash it in the washing machine it just kind of rips it apart and I've been wearing it like that for the last two years <laughs> so I said no nah, I, I think I better better get another one so um, I got one that the, the reflector didn't look as reflective but I kind of figured maybe that would be better because maybe if when when you wash it it won't uh, fall apart I'm, I'm beginning to think for this thing, if you wash it, you probably hand wash it. I think the machine is just kind of too rough on the reflector section of it. I mean, you have to wash it every now and then. You can't just like always wear it and never wash it, right? So I think going forward, if I do wash it, that's what I'll do. I'll just hand wash it. I do that with my ex Nito visor too. I will hand wash that, and because um, I mean you're sweating in it and everything, right? So <laughs> you have to do something. I asked that ex Nito for um, a couple extra visors, and they they sent that to me. So um, yeah, we're, we should be good. When this visor finally falls apart totally, I'll swap it out. All right, that is it, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't come down here that much. It's just a big circle that you go around and then you head back out again. I guess it's okay. It's just somewhere else to ride through. You know, sometimes you don't have to go too far to have a good time. I mean, uh, I know everyone wants to see new things, um, like when me and Mrs. Wright, me and Mrs. Wright, Mrs. Wright and I, <laughs> We're out riding together. Um, it is nice to see like the Fox River Trail where you see water on the side and a lot of different things to see. I, I understand that. But sometimes, you know, you can't get that far out. And so, you know, I do have some local things around here that's not so bad. But I do realize it is kind of the same stuff after a while. Or even riding the streets, it's like the same streets after a while. But it's, it's, it's just the fun of getting out. I mean, I mean, even, even if you had a, a bike path to ride on, you ride it enough times, you start getting a little bored of it, right? But it's either ride that and, and go riding, or don't ride that and go nowhere. That's how I see it. <laughs> so, I personally, I like riding on the on the uh, side streets. You know, uh, during the times when people are out working, <laughs> because uh, you're kind of still by yourself. I like seeing people's houses, what they've been doing with their homes and stuff. So I don't mind going on the streets. This is okay too. But uh, like, like I said, after a while, one forest preserve kind of starts looking like another forest preserve. 
Now, the one thing that's good with that Fussy Woods that I go to sometimes is they do have elk out there. There's four elk that's in a little preserve area for them. And you will see them out there on occasion. They're hiding some other, some other times, but they're, they're out there. Yeah, there's four of them. There used to be more from what they tell me. Um, but uh, four of them are out there now. Yeah, it's got a fenced area. You know, they're kind of stuck in there. I think they're used to all the people that always come by and gawk at them, I guess. So, anyway, <laughs> that's really about it. Didn't have that much uh, stuff to, uh, to tell you this time. I just wanted to get out and enjoy the ride a little bit. While the weather is good, while the weather is not, uh, uh, I had to get something out of my eye again, I'm telling you, while the weather is not hot, it's actually a little chilly. It's not as chilly as it was when we were at the um, Fox River Trail. That was actually kind of cold. I, I had a very thin sweatshirt on. My wife had at least a jacket on. It's kind of cutting through that sweatshirt. Yeah, I was getting kind of cold. Same thing here. This the shirts that I have on, they're very, very light. So it kind of goes right through it. All right, let's see if we get across here and, and uh, make it across safely. This is always a tough one. Well, anyways, I'll say my bye goodbyes now. I think we've, we've ridden long enough. I do appreciate you all watching and hanging out with me, giving me something to do. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time. All right, one guy's stopping, but if the other side doesn't stop, <laughs> it's okay, you can go. <laughs> if the other side doesn't stop, there's not much I can do. But anyways, <laughs> you can see one car has stopped, but the other car has never pay much attention they just kind of keep going <laughs> just go and go thank you <laughs> let her let them go because uh, I mean she, she's holding up the rest of the traffic and it's just gonna build it up even worse for me oh I see what they're doing she's trying to uh, get across <laughs> so if she's trying to get across will the others hold up too all right they're all holding up <laughs> that was unique. I thought she was waiting for me. No, nah, no such luck. She just wanted to turn in to where I was. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys next time.